Full sails out, finally. We've had to have them reefed in most of the days because the weather's been quite rough. Is this hard work, Neil? No, finally. After, what has it been, 16 days or something like that? 18 days. 18, yeah, a uh, freaking long time. We've got some decent weather. Full sail set, coasting along nicely. We're actually going in the right direction with the right wind strength and the right sail combination at the right speed. It's Goldilocks moment. It's only taken us 18 days to get to this point. Let's hope it lasts for another two weeks and then we'll be there. Uh, very relaxing right now, finally. Show you the, con show you the conditions outside. And to top it all off, Neil, I haven't taken seasick tablets today. That's not where it was aimed. Um, anyway, as I was saying, we've, it's been good that I didn't have to take seasick tablets today. No, because I'm all windblown. <laughs> yeah, because I've got a view of you. And and Neil's got his, this deal that he's not wearing a shirt the whole time we're sailing for the 30 whatever days. So he hasn't had a shirt on the whole time. And he's had to brave it because a few of the nights have been very cold. But it's good that no seasick tablets today. Yippee! day 20 now um, out from Panama we've got just under 1500 miles to go to the Marquesas and uh, the wind has all but disappeared uh, disappeared early yesterday we've been flying our Jenica or cruising spinnaker if you like since then we kept it up overnight which was a, a bit of a first for us but we worked out a contingency plan to drop it in a hell of a hurry if we needed to um, but we didn't, so that was good. Uh, one of the big issues we're facing on board at the moment, and I'm not entirely sure how to deal with it, is the route planning. Because the wind is being uh, a bit obtuse, we can't just go straight towards Nukahiva, and without the uh, whisker pole, we can't sail straight downwind, so we have to do all sorts of alternatives. And uh, we have a weather meeting once a day where we have a look at the weather software and uh, we use a, a software called Predict Wind, which is the, the software that's used by some of the, you know, the best international around the world race boats. So it's really, really good software. Well, what we're finding happens is that we have a, this meeting, at, you know, midday every day to discuss the tactics for the next 24 hours, and everybody agrees on it. And then three or four hours later, somebody, one or you know, one of the others will come to me and say, "Oh, how about we do this? Or how about we do that? How about we do the next thing?" and it's, it's becoming a real issue because what they'll do is then they'll argue their, their case sometimes really, really vehemently about why, well, we shouldn't be doing this, we should be doing what I'm saying. This is what we should be doing. A, a, a very, very vehement argument. 
And then, you know, I might say, okay, well, we'll do that. Then six hours later, they come back and say, oh, I think we should be doing something else now. So it's, it's being a real issue. I'm having to put my foot down now and say, we we'll do with whatever Predict Win says to the best of our abilities. And that's it, right or wrong. And um, I don't think everybody really likes that. Some people like to think that they know better than some of the best software in the world. But anyway, that's why. Let's have a look at what we've got. We've got the, the Genica or cruising spinnaker set. It's flapping about a bit because the wind's only about five or six knots at the moment. And we've got the full mainsail set. We also have the engine gently ticking over because uh, at the moment we're trying to head a little bit north of our, our rum line course uh, in order to pick up a predicted easterly shift in two days time which has slightly stronger breezes and we sure as hell don't want to miss that because I think we're all getting a bit tired of being being out here at the moment but uh, anyway that's life on board so here we are it's day 22 I think um, we're keeping count in the log because if we didn't do that I would have absolutely no idea uh, having a conversation in the cockpit this morning and um, the term Groundhog Day came up and it, it is very much like that at the moment each each morning you get up you see the same thing uh, we've been really really lucky with the weather uh, the last four days we've had almost an identical wind strength from the very similar direction, very similar sea state, same cloud cover, same amount of sunshine. It, it, it's, it's just really, really good. And uh, I think it's about four days now since we um, hoisted the Jenica, which is our cruising spinnaker. So that's been flying constantly now for four days. The first night was a one of those uh, ang anxiety moments it's like should we have this thing up at night you know it's a scary beast it's a big a big lump of sail and if the, we get a, 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 a big wind gust in the night is the one person on the helm going to be able to react fast enough and get us all on deck to get the thing down but the wind was so light that we took the chance and uh, I just I guess have gained con confidence since then and it's actually quite an easily manageable sail touch uh, with some wood yeah touch wood so rocking along now, we've got about 1,200 miles still to go. Um, not sure how long that'll take us. The weather, the weather gods are telling us that over the next few days the wind's likely to pick up a little bit. So the Jenica will probably come down, but we'll see how it goes. So um, in the meantime, this is what it all looks like. A lovely calm sea state. Um, even you know, Jeanette's doing well now, although 22 days at, at sea, I think she's been uh, forced to take seasick tablets for about 19 or 20 of those days. It's not a real good thing. She's just simply not getting uh, accustomed to the motion. That's going to be a big problem moving forward, I think. But having said that, she turns out meals one after another. She's doing an absolutely superhuman job. I'm just so proud of her. But uh, anyway, we'll go and have a look at some other part of the boat now. One of the things I'd heard about but had never seen before in real life is gooseneck barnacles. And uh, despite the fact that the water seems, it just appears to be incredibly clear and we had a, a very clean bottom when we left Panama, We've got a whole host of barnacles, or hopefully we can get these in the How about over here? Just got some more of them. So we're looking at the transom at the moment. I don't know if this will come out very well, but when the uh, water abates, you'll see a whole bunch of barnacles. And um, I went for my bath the other day and notice how I said the other day because we don't actually bathe daily out here there's not a lot of point really we all smell as bad as each other um, I stuck my hand underneath the hull and just to see what the condition was there and um, on the bottom of the, the hull underneath out of the, the sunlight uh, it looks like I've got a infestation of barnacle or gooseneck barnacles here as well so I suspect they're probably slowing the boat down a bit We've also got this slime coming up around the side of the boat, which you may be able to see here. That 
that's off the, the transom. So there's a beard of slime on both sides, particularly the starboard side, which is the one that seem, seems to be the uh, lower side most of the time. So it's just really quite an, uh, amazing how much gunk there must be in the water. And there's my feet if I kick them fast enough. Do you think we'll go any faster? Somehow I doubt it. And our wake behind us. But uh, yeah, so there's obviously a bit of cleaning I'll have to do when we get to the Marquesas. What's it like being on a boat at sea all of this time? Well, let's have a little bit of a look through the boat. We're 22 days into it now, and just to see see how things are looking. That's just a normal day in the office. Well, first of all, obviously I need a shave. But basically, to conserve water, I only sort of have a shower and a bit of it. Well, mainly it's a salt water shower, then a fresh water rinse off and a shave once every couple of days. Hellishly in need of a haircut. This is our foreign cabin. We're not using that at the moment for anything other than storage because the motion it is a bit too rock and rolly. Um, our foreign head, we are not using that for the same reason. Now just moving through the, the boat. This is one of the bunks. Uh, Jeanette seems to have commandeered that one. The other bunk over there, which is my one most of the time, I guess. C cushions everywhere, but that's life. Our, uh, nothing much happening in the galley today, although I think Jeanette baked some scones or something earlier on, so that's great. It's always a mess of electrical wiring around the nav station as we try and charge up all of the modern gizmos and beasts that we've got from iPads to navigation systems to computers and so on and so forth. Off watch crew do things like what Don's doing at the moment which is reading the iPad and... It's and Groundhog Day! It's Groundhog Day. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so you've done that. Every day is much the same. And then out here we have... Must be bath day for Jeanette. <laughs> Uh, it's her, her day for the laundry, she must stink the most. But, uh, yeah. So that's just basically a, a normal day in the life of um, Ray, our autopilot's steering. And it's, it's my watch, so I'm just supervising the autopilot. So that's basically what we do 24 hours a day eat, sleep, rest, read Save books. My legs and so on. Sh shave legs if you're Jeanette. Yeah. Oh, that's it.